Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. What, what begins in the Islamic economy is the realization that we respect that every community has a characteristic that its people are known for. In Islam, that characteristic is modesty and that applies across the board. But when we discuss anything in the Islamic economy, we must begin with the essence of what, what it means to be within the Islamic economy. So often we say principle before profit. And what we mean is that if you're not building a meaningful business in the Islamic economy, you're, um, you're perhaps needing to rethink what, what the purpose is of belonging in this space. One would say pursuing anything in the Islamic economy is perhaps taking the unconventional path. For me, I selected uh, an area which I felt was powerful in what it communicates. And fashion is the highest form of communication at times, because at times we don't get a chance to speak to each other. But we often uh, surmise what, what the other person represents just by what they're wearing. So it's very powerful. Islamic fashion and design, like the arts, architecture, interiors, and so on, can be an interesting space. With so many opinions flying about what it really means uh, when a woman covers, the mood can range from angry and annoyed to liberated. Now, that's quite a range for, for just one topic of Islamic fashion. Um, I've learned it's about the journey. And sometimes that journey entails faith in the knowledge that there's a higher source of goodness, that if we commit to this work for a higher purpose, a key ingredient from my perspective, um, then we have a right to expect success and goodness. It is an equal right for all. Because then the work no longer becomes about us, it becomes about the greater good and how it will bring benefit to all. Islamic fashion is one of the finest studies in liberal arts. For the liberal arts were developed to free the mind from the trappings of our learnings and any mindset that was imposed on us. This study of liberal arts is what liberates us from messages of fear that are created all around us. You see, the fear messages when it comes to Islamic fashion weren't just for those around us to sort of beware of those that are covered and oppressed and looking uh, a little bit too wrapped up. But they were for us, too, that if in some way we don't conform to their ideas of normal, we would be outcast. And our message back uh, by further embracing Islamic fashion, and especially in the way that it's being done today, um, so vastly and so globally, was largely we believe in who we are and our values, and we don't fear your messages. Islamic fashion is the ultimate disruptive model. It came along and said we don't compromise on values and self-respect, yet we're just as cool or elegant or trendy as anyone. We said we do fashion with rules. And if you want in, you have to play by our rules. And they did. This shook up the industry, as you can all see today. Whereas before, there were no rules. In fashion, in fact, it didn't matter how much fabric you used, or even if you did use fabric at all. Anything went, there were no rules. And we shook that up. Now you have a type of fashion whose purpose is to represent, defend, honor, and uplift. If you know how to color within our lines, we said, the results were filled with promises of great opportunities in a mammoth market. And of course, we see today the likes of everyone from Dolce & Gabbana, Tommy Hilfiger, Zara, uh, even DKNY, and many more, lining right up by these rules. So the question is, how does it work? And the first place to start is to ask yourself, are you really committed to the Islamic and do you really know what that means in, in Islamic economy? Because that's what it's about to the consumers. They only partake in, in Islamic consumerism in the Islamic economy because it means something to them and it upholds their values. And if they don't feel understood and respected for their beliefs, they likely won't gravitate towards your product. Mind you, you don't have to be uh, practicing in Islam, you don't have to be a practicing Muslim to partake in this industry and, and don't think that that's a requirement. But it certainly is imperative that one understand the logic behind the reasons for the rules and the drive by the consumers and the benefits these rules bring about to everyone. This global consumer group with the spending power of hundreds of billions of dollars embraces their Islamic practices for a holistic way of life. They attribute their practice and beliefs as the reason for the connections they make with their family, their communities, their creator, their world, for their overall enriched lives and journey. 
how am I doing on time? Because this is, yeah, okay, good. All right. Um, yet they live large. They don't march to anyone's tune if that tune is off. Their values lead them to march to a sound tune, a gentle tune, a purpose-based tune to reach their goals. Once the values are adhered to and put into motion and not compromised or corrupted, that's when we all start seeing results in everything, including our own health, believe it or not, our relationships, and our life successes. It indeed is a holistic approach. But the trick is to not waver. We need to pass certain tests, and sometimes we are tested more often than not, especially in today's climate. We really don't know we, what we are about to face when we leave, leave our homes dressed the, the way we are. <clears throat> So, uh, at times it'll feel impossible and other times just prove to be a very difficult uh, journey. But believe me when I tell you that the patience and perseverance that we, that we need brings immense reward every time. So we also see that our sense of dressing brings its own challenges and perceptions from the outside world. And we recognize that there's good in it if we keep going hopefully without apology, understanding our beliefs and the good they bring when practice keeps us on track. <clears throat> Islamic fashion meant that we stand before everyone and everything with dignity and truth, saying this is who we are and it, is no it, is, it too is normal and beautiful, not fearing the truth but embracing it and standing firmly by it under all circumstances. And sometimes these days that takes strength and character, given the current climate around the world. When we dress this way, we are reminded to accept responsibility for our lives. It means we are committed to higher character. And so that is so what I would like to see in this industry especially, and I'm talking particularly the modest fashion sector within the fashion industry, is a more fulfilling experience that speaks to these beliefs. There is an importance in embracing what we believe in, and in, in allowing ourselves to be different in character um, than the mainstream fashion industry. We, we do have differences, and it's okay to be different, and it's okay to embrace it, and even talk about it, to educate others, and to dispel the ignorance. We hope to see natural standards develop in the way we deal with our work with each other, and in, with business in general. And that's where the ethics and the values come in. And it's important we all reflect on what our part is in this. And we all do have a part, even if you are just a consumer or someone who just embraces Islamic fashion as their lifestyle, you have a big part in this industry. We must avoid the empty emptiness that is reminiscent of competitive industries that are all around us. So the fashion industry is, is no different. It is actually extremely competitive. To not retain our own character and to mimic others would be a shame because we are robbing ourselves and our colleagues of a richer experience. And that must be something we constantly reflect on. Modest fashion is more than just fashion. It is adab. And the word adab, it's, it's, it's a terminology in Islam, which means closest to the word manners in the English language, but with an emphasis on good character and connection with others. It is spiritual, it is filled with character of love, forgiveness, friendship, and generosity. And these are the things that bring meaning into any industry. In my opinion, there's, there's a few models of success, and I can elaborate on it maybe um, offline a little bit, uh, perhaps after, after this talk. But um, the models of success that we must embrace are, are very important, especially in our industry. Uh, we must know that every successful person must have a strong sense of purpose. Um, I won't go too much into that, but, but it's very important to know that successful people seek out mentors. Sometimes it's more important to be a follower than a leader. We already have the greatest leader and, 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 a, and a beautiful example in our prophet, peace be upon him, where he was the, the best in business, the best father, the best husband, the best community member. And so often at times we are challenged with what should we do when we're presented with circumstances? And that is the best uh, example to follow. Um, in finishing up, because I have to finish up, 
Um, I would say that uh, we must continue to enjoy the freedom that we have. The way we dress, the hijab, um, you know, there's, there's a saying that in the, in the veil I am seen and without it I am hidden. And, um, and it's very important to embrace the idea that, that we walk in this life with no fear. Because if you really do embrace the Islamic lifestyle, you embrace um, the, the fact that we fear God and God alone. And that liberates us from everything else. So I'll uh, see you guys all after the talk. It was lovely to, to meet you. And uh, if you need to learn more, please go to our website, ifdcouncil.org. Thank you very much.